All right, everybody, here we are for our last video for this little series here. And I have all of these things laid out and now we need to do our cast shadows. So what is a cast shadow, you ask? Well, or maybe you didn't, but you're gonna find out anyway. Cast shadow is like what's right here where the object that you're looking at makes the shadow go to the ground. So if you stand outside in full sun, you're going to see your shadow on the ground. That shadow that you see on the ground is called your cast shadow because you are casting a shadow. Not all of these have it yet. There's still pieces in the work, but you can see that cast shadow can actually go up onto something else as well. So if our objects are close together, that's going to happen. This one has a cast shadow and sometimes shadows can kind of cross into each other and where they cross into each other, you're gonna get a darker area. So let's take a look and see what that ends up being with our little guys right here. All right, so first off, I'm going to remind you that our light is coming from the upper left-hand side. So that means that all of our shadows are going to go to the right. All right, so they're going to flow in the right direction. So like you're reading, they're gonna go that, that way because it's coming from the left, all right? So this shadow, you're not gonna see much of it. You're gonna see just a little bit of it and it's gonna hit this right here and then you're gonna see probably right about here, except it's gonna come over, but here's the problem. I just drew this line down, right? Like as if I was drawing it from the square, but this pyramid is in the way. That means the shadow gets stopped by the pyramid. So what you're gonna see is something like that because the pyramid is going to have some of that shadow on it. So this shadow we already put in here, but the truth of it is that this whole bottom section because of our cube, this whole bottom area is going to be darker because our cube casts a shadow, at least on mine, maybe yours doesn't. Mine casts a shadow onto that surface. But over here, I'm still going to have a triangular shadow from my pyramid. So I'm still gonna cast shadow over here from the pyramid, right here. And my line's a little bit wonky, so I'm gonna clean that up with my eraser, just a little bit, right here and here, that's better. So keep in mind also that the closer to the object you go in some light, it's going to be darker closer to the object. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of darkness closer to my actual objects. So my cube and the um, pyramid at this point. Well, we have a second pyramid over here, but this one's a little bit shaggy. So we're gonna get back to that one in a minute. And because the light is coming from slightly, ever so slightly from behind, we're gonna have a cast shadow for the cylinder that looks like this, okay? So it's going to go slightly to the front, just ever so slightly but it's still going to the side because it's coming from that angle. So right down here along the bottom is going to be our darkest area. And then it's going to cast the shadow right along the front here. Okay, so next up, and if you need to go ahead and rewind that back so you can kind of see what's going on there. I'm gonna save this guy for last, um, but right here, what you would see for a, a cylinder like, or I mean a cone like that, um, you would end up seeing, so let me see. I have a bunch of stuff on the back of these papers from my other class. Let me take this one right here. So I would take, if I imagine the other side of the cylinder, please don't draw that, or I mean the cone. If I, understand, if I imagine the other side of the cone, the light hits here, and then from the furthest part out and the furthest part out, we get a projected cast shadow that is in a triangular shape. So I'm going from that furthest area out. So I have to imagine 
in something like that where this is. And so this is gonna be right here. I'm not gonna see a lot of the shadow because some of the shadow is like going to go over. Notice how I'm curving this because it's going right over the top of like this other object that I put here, my organic. So I'm curving my shadow to go over the top of my organic instead of on the ground like this. So instead of being on the ground like this, it's curving wherever I want curves to be in my, my organic, it's kind of curving to show that that's not flat. All right, so I end up, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of highlight right here because presumably on my organic, it's gonna get some light, just not full light right there. So we are gonna have a little bit. So now that poor organic guy right there, that's kind of squished a little bit, has a shadow from the pyramid right over the top of it. And his shadow, the organic, oops, I forgot his eyebrows. There we go. Um, the organic is going to come slightly from the front as well. And then because it's rounded over here, the shadow is not gonna go all the way to the top. It's gonna stop a little bit short. And the shadow is going to also be rounded. Okay, so that's pretty much it for those guys. Then we just have these two left. All right, so I'm gonna do the sphere last, but we're gonna go ahead and make that triangle out. But again, I have this hit, but I'm gonna pretend I don't right now. And I'm gonna just go ahead and finish where that comes to. But this is going to end up now with a rounded cast shadow on this one part right here. And then this, because of where that pyramid is, is going to be darker in here than we normally would have it because the shadow from that is filling it in a little bit, okay? So when I do the shadow, I'm gonna just go ahead and we have some shadows overlapping over here. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in really lightly but I wanna make a couple notes because we have a couple shadows intersecting, all right? And we have the fuzziness of this one. So right here is a shadow that's over intersecting. So this one is going to be darker because there's two shadows right here, okay? So that's gonna be just a little bit darker. This is gonna be darker. And this whole thing, I have to remember, it's hairy, so, like, it's fuzzy there. So my shadow has to also be fuzzy, okay? So I have to have a fuzzy shadow. So instead of going this way, it's going to go the opposite of what's showing there, okay? So I have that fuzzy shadow right here. And frankly, this one, you wouldn't even see this section too much, but let me go ahead and there we go. All right, so you're gonna have something that looks like that, okay? So just a little bit of shadow from one to the other, all right? Now this guy looks like he's floating. If I did wanna have him floating, all I'd have to do is make a spiky circle ball um, shadow on the bottom and just kind of put some spikes out of it. And that would make it look like he's floating. As a matter of fact, that would be kind of fun. But if I want to make him like he's on the ground, then I need to take that shadow right here and shade it in right underneath in kind of like a slightly elongated oval, okay? So again, the light's coming from this way, so it should be a slightly elongated oval. But if I had a sphere that was floating, um, depending on where I put it, I'm gonna have that circle right underneath something like that, so it looks like it's floating. So if I wanted to do a, another one right back here, and I'm gonna just do this one kind of as a bonus one. Um, if I wanna do that, 
there it is. It's just floating back here and we're just gonna give it a little bit of luminosity, make it a little bit um, shadowed, but not too much. And you just kind of put that one in there real quick, okay? So this one's not gonna be too overwhelming, just a little bit right here and little happy floaty bubble type thing and then the shadow down at the bottom okay all right that about covers it for these basics i hope you had some fun with this and i can't wait to see what you guys do all right take care bye, -bye. thank you for watching